Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Wells, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Mary Iverson and I serve as pastor alongside Pastor Meg Sander. Today is the first Sunday in the Christmas season. Christmas is not over. We are now in the midst of the 12 days of Christmas that the song talks about. The Christmas season is what we are in the midst of. As I say every time we worship, a big thank you to the team that works together to lead worship today. Our camera technician this morning is Brad Hagen, so thanks to him we have a broadcast. Andy Grosskreutz is our worship assistant. Our singers today are McKenna Erickson, Sandy Hartman, John Melby, Bill Grosskreutz Jr., Jean Carlson is our pianist. So thanks to all. We continue to broadcast our worship services and we will keep doing that. And at this time we do not have in-person worship. The Good Shepherd Church Council has decided that the threshold for whether we have in-person worship or do not is whether students are in the classroom at USC. And it's about whether it's full um, distant learning or students in the classroom. Classes will soon be resuming for the students at USC. So from what it seems at this time is we will be having in-person worship once again at Good Shepherd starting January 10th. And the um, restrictions, the safety guidelines that we have will continue to be in place with face masks and distancing and screeners at the door. So more information will be shared about that next week, but it does seem that worship will, continue, will uh, resume with in-person worship starting January 10th. Today we have a special worship, worship service prepared for you. We will be singing six Christmas carols. Music is such a big part of the Christmas season. Along with those carols, we will tell the story that is behind the song. Some of the stories are about the composer and what was going on in their lives or in their times, uh, what was involved then when they wrote the Christmas carol. These carols are quite inspiring and hopefully will further inspire you after you hear their stories. We begin with prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, we lift our voices. We lift our hearts and our lives to you in praise. We pray, God, that you would uphold the weary for whom praise may be difficult. Humble the independent. Transform us all so that we may be your faithful servants. We continue to celebrate the birth of your son, our savior. Bless us now during this hour with joy in our hearts, with hope in our lives. Amen. The first Christmas carol that we're focusing on today is Joy to the World. It is one of the more popular Christmas carols, but it was not written for Christmas. And it is not even inspired by the Christmas story, but the carol, the song, is based upon Psalm 98. It focuses on the second coming the second coming of Jesus, not his birth. And it was written by not one person, but a collaboration eventually from three people. Yet many consider it to be one of their favorite Christmas carols. The song was first inspired by an English poet, Isaac Watts. He based this song upon Psalm 98, as I said, which reads, the psalm reads, Make a joyful noise, make a loud noise, and rejoice and sing praise. Who will come to judge the earth and all the people with equity? The second person then to help in this collaboration of what we have now as Joy to the World was George Frederick Handel, who wrote The Messiah. Part of the hymn was borrowed from some of the composition from Handel. 
Then the ham ended up coming across the Atlantic Ocean to America, and then an American composer added to the carol as well. And the final result is what we have now, which has become a favorite Christmas hymn based on an Old Testament psalm set to musical fragrant fragments composed in England and then pieced together finally here in the United States. What an inspiration to know that God worked through three different people in different parts of the world to finally bless us with this song that brings us so much joy at Christmas. Singing now the beloved Joy to the World. Christmas Carol, What Child Is This? William Dix, who wrote the hymn, grew up in Wales. His father was a medical doctor and an alcoholic. William's father was thrown into prison for failure to pay his debts. When William was eight years old, his father was released from prison, but then took a ship to America, abandoning his family. William Dix grew up got married and became an insurance agent in Scotland, where he and his wife raised their seven children. When William was 29 years old, he got terribly sick and nearly died. He was confined to his bed for many months and became very depressed. He wrote poetry to help him deal with his depression. The illness caused a spiritual transformation in William's life, and his poems became songs of faith. Later, William Dix sent his friend a copy of the hymn he wrote, which we now call, What Child Is This? William explained that he wrote, wrote it when he was sick and depressed. He took it, it took him weeks to write it out because his hands trembled so badly. His friend set the poem to music. This beloved Christmas carol tells the Christmas story from the point of view of the shepherds who came to the manger scene. Uniquely, the carol connects the baby Jesus to his later suffering and death, even as he lies in the arms of Mary. This hymn asks us a question and challenges us to think about what it means when God becomes human. The Christmas carol, What Child Is This? <laughs> Yeah. 
This is the story of O Little Town of Bethlehem, a Christmas carol written by Phillips Brooks. Phillips Brooks was an Episcopal pastor in Philadelphia during the Civil War. He struggled as a pastor during the war because so many people in his congregation were grieving. He said that every Sunday as he led worship, he looked out at the church filled with widows and families who were filled with grief. He struggled as a pastor to find a message of joy or hope to preach to them. Then President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and Pastor Phillips Brooks was asked to preside at President Lincoln's funeral service. He was not Lincoln's pastor, but was asked to lead the funeral because he was known as a very inspirational preacher. Later that year, poor Pastor Brooks needed a break. He needed a break so he could regain his faith and lift his spirit. So he took an extended leave and he traveled overseas to visit the Holy Lands. He was near Jerusalem on Christmas Eve that year. And in order to get away from the crowds, he borrowed a horse and rode out into the countryside. And he later explained that just as the sun was setting, he rode into Bethlehem. And on top of the perfection of that moment, the sky was clear and full of stars. Pastor Brooks was in awe of that beautiful scene and he rejoiced in how the Savior of the world was born into such a place with simple beauty. Peace filled his soul and that whole moment was just one thing that really helped restore the pastor's faith. Pastor Brooks returned to his congregation and he was restored. He had high hopes and was ready to inspire them. And that inspiration was put into a poem that the pastor wrote. His organist friend, Louis Redner, added music to the words just in time for that next Christmas Eve worship for the Sunday school children to sing. The hymn soon became very popular and is now known round the world. As this hymn inspired his congregation, may it inspire us yet today. Singing now, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Christmas angels Our scripture reading is from the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the story behind the Christmas carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory, which was written by James Montgomery. James Montgomery was born in Scotland of Irish parents. His father was a pastor and felt the call to serve as a missionary in the Caribbean island of Barbados. Surprisingly, when James was only five years old, both his parents left him with a church group and went to Barbados. His parents died a few years later, so James never saw them again. The church group saw to it that James was educated and tried to get him to go to seminary to study to be a pastor, like his father. But it wasn't a good fit for him. James loved poetry, and poetry was banned at the, cemetery, <laughs> at the seminary. He tried to study under a baker, but that wasn't a good fit either. Finally, James started working at a Scottish newspaper, and it ended up owning the paper. James was radical with his writing, so radical that his editors against slavery landed him in jail. His editorials against slavery landed him in jail several times. On Christmas Eve, 1860, James Montgomery published a poem in his newspaper that was about the nativity from the points of view of different people who visited the manger scene. James went on to write more than 400 hymns. Listen now, responding to the great gift of Jesus our Savior, the hymn by James Montgomery. Thank you. 
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. When the shepherds heard the good news about the birth of Jesus from the angels, they responded by going to see God's great gift of Jesus, glorifying and praising God. In the same way, we respond like shepherds. We respond to the amazing things God is doing when we bring our gifts in an offering, praising God and giving God glory. You are able to make a donation by visiting the Good Shepherd website and clicking online giving. You can also put your offering in the mail and send it to the church. Thank you for your faithful support of the ministry of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Our next Christmas carol story is about a lesser popular Christmas carol. It's about, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, and it was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In March of 1861, an 18-year-old Charles Longfellow walked out of his family home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and without his family knowing it, took a train to Washington, D.C., and joined President Lincoln's Union Army to fight in the Civil War. Charles was the oldest of six children born to Fanny and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, a very famous poet. Henry's wife, Fanny, died tragically in a house fire two years after her son Charles left to join the Union Army. Her dress caught fire and Henry woke from a nap and tried to ex extinguish the flames on his wife, first with a rug and then with his own body, but sadly Fanny died the next morning and Henry's facial burns were so severe that he couldn't attend his own wife's funeral. Then in December of 1863, Henry, the poet, received word that his soldier son, Charles, had survived a terrible bout of typhoid fever and was severely shot in the shoulder as the country fought a war against itself. Weeks later on Christmas Day, the grieving widower, Henry Longfellow, wrote a poem trying to sort out all these feelings that he had in his heart. The grief for his wife, the burns he had on his face, his son struggling with health, both from an illness and an injury, gone fighting in a war, not knowing if he would come home. The poet heard the Christmas bells that December day he heard the choirs singing, Peace on Earth. But yet he knew that the world was filled with pain and violence that didn't match the Christmas message. He wrote a poem that shares the confident hope that he found in the midst of bleak despair. Longfellow wanted to hang his head in despair but hearing on Christmas Day those Christmas bells reminded him of one 
amazing hope that he could hang on to that day. The hope that God is not dead, nor does God sleep. Singing now, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. places, as a child in a stable and in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers which come from the unlikely corners of our lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, word of God made flesh among us, shine into our lives like the Bethlehem star and reveal your truth and grace. As the song of the angels is stilled, the star in the sky is gone and the shepherds are back with their flocks. Help us to carry on the spirit of Christmas as we seek to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, and to help our all your children find joy to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus, our Savior, be born in our hearts as you were born of Mary. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Turn hearts of despair into hearts of hope. Turn the weeping of grief and pain into the joy of wholeness and healing. We pray for Bebo Getcho, Doug Schroeder, Barb Fox, Carter Schrader as he recovers from surgery, Gail Reddig as she prepares for her bone marrow transplant, and Lori Hipper as she recuperates from her bone marrow donation. Provide comfort and care to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Move us outwards from our selfish desires and limited vision, O God. Bless our ministries and use us to proclaim your grace and love and joy to all people, so that they might know unto them a child is born, a Savior is given, who is Christ the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Be near us, Lord Jesus, and we ask you to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all your dear children with your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with you there. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 
This is the story of the black spiritual, Go Tell It on the Mountain, written by John Work, Jr. During the bitter days of slavery, black workers on American plantations found hope in songs they sang together. They were people who longed for freedom. For many, their hope and strength came through faith in God. The slaves put their faith to music and sang together while working in the fields. The unwritten hymns were not written down, but passed on from plantation to plantation. It is amazing that the songs survived at all. Many of the composers could not read or write, so the songs were, weren't written down for decades. A few songs spread from the fields to the small slave churches, and eventually to white churches and even concert halls. Concert halls. Many, though, were lost. A father and son team, John Work Sr. and Jr., are responsible for preserving many of the slave spirituals. John Work Sr. was a choir director in Nashville. He first learned as many songs as he could from his elders and then had his choir sing them. His son became a professor in the music department at Fisk University in Nashville, then wrote down as many of the slave spirituals, spirituals one of the last spirituals that John Work Jr. found has become the popular Christmas carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain. In fact, it was one of the few slave spiritual songs that was a Christmas carol. Most of the songs they found focused on the pain and suffering of slavery and the joy and happiness that heaven promised. In this song, the slaves made a connection with the lowly shepherds who were touched by God at the first Christmas. To the black slaves, the birth of a savior who sets us free is a message, message that must be shouted from the mountaintops. The connection for us is that we are held captive by the invisible chains, chains of grief and pain and suffering and selfishness. We can join together in rejoicing that our God sent us his son, a savior, to set us free from all that binds us. The famous hymn, Carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.